Welcome in, Nimby Lions Nation. Happy to have you with us. Tyler Donahue, uh, Land of Ten football coverage and Penn State football and then recruiting and, and all things Nimby Lions. And what a year it's been for Penn State, not just as a football team. We know they've been successful now, unbeaten number two in the country. Uh, but the story that we've been covering throughout the year is this recruiting class as well. They are a top five class in the country, matches pretty well with a top five team. We're going to have one of their class leaders on with us today. Um, that is Jesse Lucchetta. He's a guy who has been viewed as a class leader by uh, us reporters, by his classmates, um, and, and he's somebody that we're excited to have on. Uh, so let's get ready to go uh, with Jesse. You're going to learn about some of his background. And, uh, he's got a really interesting background, and, and he is a guy who's going to make a big impact uh, for Penn State down the line. But let's get into it right now. Um, Jesse's going to join our broadcast. It's a convenient new thing that Facebook will allow us to do, and I'm excited to have there he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Jesse Lucchetta. How you doing? Uh, pride of Mercyhurst Prep. What's going on, Jesse? Good evening. Good evening, good evening. Nice to get you on. Technology is tricky sometimes, my friend, but uh, I'm glad we were able to do this. And uh, say hello to Penn State Nation uh, right here on landof10.com. And happy to have you with us. Yes, sir. It's my pleasure. Excited to be a part of it. Awesome. Well, Jesse is our first guest. Uh, Facebook has uh, adopted this new thing where you can have a second person on these Facebook Lives and uh, we're going to hope to do this often with other classmates, but I, I was trying to figure who I wanted to lead it off with, and I said, Jesse Lucchetta has got to be the guy. <laughs> this is the leader of the class. Everyone keeps telling me yes, I see that person. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, so, Jesse, first off, give us a, a little bit of background for our viewers who maybe don't follow recruiting as much as others. Um, your background is a little bit unique because you're actually from outside the United States. Absolutely. Uh, growing up, you know, from Ottawa. I'll mm -hmm. let you tell the story because it's, it's your story. Yes, sir. So, uh, originally, I'm born and raised in uh, Canada. I grew up in Ottawa, Ontario. Uh, you know, I'm always referencing got the Canadian flag behind me. Uh, my See the flag, yeah. Sir, I made the transition <laughs> to come to, you know, pursue my dreams and attend school, you know, across the border. Uh, three years ago, you know, I was excited. Um, I left all my friends and family back home, and you know I was just I dedicated myself to you know, to pursue my dreams and you know just take a big step and it worked it worked out and you know two more months I'll be living up my dreams in Happy Valley. Yeah, and 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 Jesse is one of the recruits who is going to be on campus. I saw you got some paperwork in the mail recently. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Another step towards being a student athlete at Penn yes, State. Exciting stuff. Um, but so just to give the, our listeners and our viewers uh, some background. You chose Mercyhurst Prep uh, as your, your transfer option coming to yes, Canada, uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. Why was that the right choice for you? How did you end up there? Obviously, it's been a very successful choice, but yeah. what was the background there? Um, you know, um, at the time when I was in Canada, I made the connection with Javon Johnson, who at the time was playing for the Ottawa Red Blacks, the CFL team. And he actually graduated from Mercyhurst Prep. So the connection, he just told me, you know, there's an opportunity for me to go and, you know, study abroad play football, get a great education. So he put me in contact with my head coach, Jeff Fruit. And I just told him, you know, I'm a kid, you know, who's dedicated. I'm, I'm really looking to pursue my dreams. And, you know, we made uh, what was what we had to do so uh, so I'd be possible to come down here and attend school. And, you know, ever since then, it's been, it's been great. It's worked out pretty well for the team, too. You've been yes, a big impact player. 9-0 and on the season. Yes, uh, most recent game, a 65-6 to victory over mm -hmm. Lakeview. Uh How's it feel to be on beaten? It's getting pretty late. Yes, uh, playoffs are, are coming around the corner. Yes, uh, tell me about your team, and, and I really want to hear you evaluate yourself because I know you're really proud of the strides you've made, the progress you made coming into your senior season. Yes, sir. Um, you know, we're excited um, from from the, from day one. You know, we set out to to dominate from from the time we stepped on the field for training camp. You know, the guys we really gelled together. You know, I think the biggest thing for us this year is that we've gelled and become a family. We play for one another, and we're excited that every time someone makes a play. You know, we're each other's brother's keeper, you know, to our strongest link, to our weakest link. We support one another. Um, you know, with the fact with us being 9-0, you know, with targets on our back, um, we, 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 we now have a bye week this week, so we're just going to take it easy, rest up, work hard, watch more film, and prepare for our next opponent. And, you know, we're focused. You know, opportunities like this don't come, don't come around every day, so we're trying to, you know, seize the moment and, you know, hopefully rewrite history and do something special. Because we have the guys and the coaching staff, and we're excited to see how far we can go. Big opportunity. And, Jesse, you've been big on both sides of the ball this year. I saw you at the 7-on-7 seven seven action yes, um, on campus back in June. You were playing tight end, wide receiver. Yeah. You've done some of that 
similar stuff. You have, you've had a pick six. Yes, sir. Um, talk about your personal development this season. I know you put a lot of speed training in, yes, in the off season because you look pretty fast this year. I mean, yes, junior film was impressive this year. I'm seeing a quicker guy. Yeah. Um, honestly, just off season, I just dedicated myself. I wanted to come back stronger, faster, and just be a player, you know, my teammates can depend on it, you know, in those moments where, you know, yeah, Jess is going to make that play. So, you know, um, my work ethic, you know, I, it, was, it was second to none. Um, you know, I'm excited. You know, I'm going to take the same mindset, you know, heading up to state and just prepare myself to work. It's not going to be easy, but I'm excited. And I just can't wait to be a part of the team and, you know, contribute to, to, to what we have going on. Now, Jesse, um, 6'3", 240, is that still right around your, where you're playing these days? 6'3", 234, shed some weight. So, okay. you know, that was a the sleek, biggest. A sleeker, sir. Jesse Lucchetta yes, out sir. there. A little bit sleeker out there. More yes, of a sir. sports car now. Yes, sir. Got you. Um, now, Penn State, we'll, we'll talk about, you know, this season. Um, but we got to start with just a few days ago, mm. whiteout environment, Happy Valley, 42 to 13 victory over Michigan. Saw you out there, per usual, big smile on your face, yes, surrounded by your future teammates, giving the hug to Coach Franklin as he makes his way in. Mm. Kind of give our viewers some perspective on what it's like to attend one of these games as a recruit, um, and especially in that kind of environment. Um, honestly, there's, there's no way to, uh, to describe what game day in Happy Valley is like. It's, it's ridiculous. That whiteout for me was my first whiteout, and it was absolutely insane. You know, just being on the field for pre-games and – seeing the team come out with their pump-up video and the atmosphere with having 110,000 fans, you know, screaming their lungs out the entire game, just supporting, supporting the guys in blue is ridiculous. Um, I had goosebumps on the field when the team came out, you know. And it, just, it, it hit me. It was like, wow, this is going to be me, you know, the next couple of years. So I'm excited. Um, Penn State, there's nothing like it. If you haven't been to a game in the Valley, you need to do so. So that's, that's really all I can say. Well, you better believe we'll talk a little bit about some other recruits, but I want to talk about the performance of the team. This defense, seven games in, still allowing fewer than 10 points per game. Yeah. You're going to be a part of this group next year. I know you hope to be a legitimate part of it, making yes, plays out there in 2018. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they've been so success successful? And, um, you know, obviously a lot of senior leadership, but there's been some younger players stepping up. Yes, sir. Um, honestly, I, from my perspective, I could just see how, how everyone's bought into the program, you know, with, with having the best defensive coordinator in the game, Brent Pry leading the way, having – he's putting the best, the best players in the position to succeed. You know, you have guys like Lamont, you know, Jason Cabin that is doing what they do best, going out there, dominating, having fun, and making it look good. So I'm, I'm excited. It's, it's ridiculous, but I'm going to be out there for the next four years, you know, contributing to, to, to LBU and, you know, just continuing the legacy. Is there a player on this current Penn State defense that you look at and think you kind of fit a similar mold and maybe you could fill a similar role? Absolutely. Jason Cabinda. That's, that's who I model my game after. So, you know, everything Cabinda does, I look and see what I can do to incorporate into my game and what, what could I do to, you know, take it to the next level. Cabinda considered one of the top leaders of this Penn State team defense overall. Okay. You're considered a top leader of the Penn State recruiting class. Do you intend to carry over that kind of leadership mentality? I know it's a little bit more difficult when you're a freshman yeah. on a team with a lot of established guys, but is that just kind of your natural mindset? Absolutely. You know, I've always been, uh, you know, an individual that when, when surrounded by my peers, I've, you know, I've been considered a leader. So I'm going to do whatever I can do to, to continue that and just lead the, one, the ones who are surrounding me and just be a vocal, you know, a vocal leader and just lead them on through, through all my actions. Well, being a leader in a recruiting class means being a recruiter in a recruiting class. Yes, I know there were so many guys that you probably wanted to have conversations with at the game, but yeah. um, got to give a shout out to maybe the next player from Canada who could come to Penn State. John we Messi. got you. We got Jonathan Sutherland. John Messi. Um, you know, we've got a. It's it's, a, it's been a streak now of players. Yeah. Daniel Joseph. Yeah. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about him? Because I've mentioned him on on my show yeah. before. Who should we be looking for out of Canada? He was at the game Saturday. John Mechie. He's he's next up. He's gonna he's the real deal. You know, we played together growing up in Canada. We actually played on the travel team that ended up going to Texas and we won that game and he ended up going to school down in Hager, uh, Hager, I think it's what is it, Hagerstown, Maryland. At uh yeah. yeah. So that's where he's attending school and he's just dominating out there. You know, he goes out to the Nike opening, dominates. So it's gonna be an exciting year for him. He's 
he's going to be making some noise. And I'm excited because I'm telling you, he's not going anywhere else. Come to the Valley. <laughs> a lot of confidence. Uh, and this is a 2019 recruit, wide receiver, defensive back at his school. Uh, many view him as a wide receiver. Um, he came up to camp, got an offer, and now he's, you know, or showing up to camp as a recruit. Okay. Now, there was a, a couple of big-time 2018 recruits on campus with you guys, along with the class. Mm -hmm. uh, those were Quantel Reigns, Tyreek Smith. Let's start with Reigns. He's committing on Monday mm -hmm. uh, four teams, Florida, uh, Pittsburgh, Penn State, West Virginia. He has in the mix. Is that a guy you would love to get in the class? And, and the other question is, how does the numbers game work? A lot of people are wondering if Penn State can fit him in this class. Yeah, you know, Quantel's a great athlete even better kid. So, you know, we'd love to have him to join the class. So we're excited to see where he's going to, you know, make his commitment in the next uh, four years on Monday. So, Yeah, it'll be exciting for him and his family. Yeah. And then we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for Tyreek Smith out of Cleveland. He's going to commit January 4th at the Under Armour All-America Bowl. Yes, sir. What was the conversation like with him uh, at the whiteout game? He'll be back for an official visit in December, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. How much are you guys all in on his recruitment? Man, you know, I try to talk to, I try to speak with Tariq as much as possible. Um, you know, seeing him there this weekend, for me, I just, you know, make, making sure he was around all the commits, making sure he knew that, you know, we really consider him a part of the family and we're going to do everything we can, you know, to make sure he makes the move, the right move to join the family. So. And, and, and Tyreek Smith will be at Ohio State this weekend. So will Rasheed yes, Walker, another Penn State commit. So they'll be in Columbus watching Penn State play again. Yes, sir. Um, so, but, there's been a lot of talk, and, and as a defensive guy, I'm sure you love it, the big three, the big three, the big three, these defensive ends, Micah yeah. Parsons, Jason Away, Tyreek Smith. Can the dream happen? Can these guys all end up in the same class? And, and how much are you working like heck to, to do your part to make sure that happens? Honestly, it, it can, there's, there's a strong possibility that it can happen. Um, if, if that was to happen, having those three players, you know, make the move to, you know, pursue the next four years – at Penn State, it'd be ridiculous because it only make my job that much easier. So, you know, I'm recruiting them and I'm making sure they know that. Listen, you can't go wrong coming to Penn State. It's the best of both worlds. The best of both worlds, sorry. And, you know, so great and academics. And by the way, yes, sir. Yeah. And by and by the way, you've got uh, Aeneas Hawkins, PJ Mustafer, exactly. Cole Pepper already up front as well. Exactly. Um, now, people are wondering, you know, how are these guys different? How are they similar? How would you describe, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a long description, but how would you kind of describe the game of Micah Parsons, Jason Away, Tyreek Smith individually, yeah. and what they bring to a football field? I mean, they all have their own traits. You know, I would say Micah, he's a lot of speed, strength, and finesse. Um, Jason's quick. He's very fast off the ball. And all three of them, Tyreek is just dominant, you know. And I'm telling you, all three of them together is it's ridiculous. It wouldn't be fair. So, yeah. Tell yeah, you. that's bad, bad news for the next generation of Big Ten quarterbacks uh, yes, that we have to face, you guys, it would seem. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about this Ohio State game. I mentioned Rasheed Walker will be there. Tyreek Smith will be there. Yeah. You said you're on a bye week, so I'd imagine you're going to be on a couch somewhere yeah. watching this game. I'll, be, I'll probably be watching intently. the game with my teammates. <laughs> uh. Now, J.K. Dobbins on the other side of the football field, he looks like after Saquon Barkley leaves, he could be maybe one of the best, if not the best, running back in the Big Ten. Yeah. What do you think they face as a defensive test going up against an experienced quarterback with JT Barrett, this, this on-the-rise freshman in, in, uh, in J.K. Dobbins, and just a group of playmakers? Um, it's nothing new to us. You know, week in and week out, we're going we're gonna to go up against the best of the best. So I, I'm, I know, what, you know they're, how they're feeling. They're going to go out ready to just ball out. So it's going to be an exciting game. And if I'm not mistaken, you actually received a scholarship offer from Ohio State, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Je Jesse, Auburn, Florida, Georgia, LSU, Ohio State. I could go on for the next five minutes. Yeah. But uh, the mission was accomplished coming from Canada to here. And that's where I want to get to next. I mean, I know you said your parents hadn't been to – you know, your family hadn't been to campus until this summer, right? They didn't no, get sir. down until the summer. Yeah. So they've been kind of watching you have the success from afar. Mm -hmm. It can't be easy for you or for them. Uh, but how have they responded to just all the college attention that you've received and, and now where you are now, a couple months away from becoming a Penn State Nittany line? Um, it was funny at first, honestly, when my recruitment started and all these coaches were starting to call my mom, you know, just starting to show her show a bunch of love. I mean, she didn't know what to do. <laughs> you know, my mom, <laughs> she's, she's not really in tune with the football the football part of me. She doesn't really understand it. So, you know, It'll I was, grow on exactly. Her. It'll grow so I was trying to slowly, you know, 
break it down there. And she, she loved it, honestly. She just she just kept thanking God for, you know, all the times I was blessed with. So she absolutely loved it. And when I finally got her, got the chance to get her on campus this summer, she was blown away. She was blown away. You know, she she got to spend time with Coach Franklin, Coach Pry, and just see the facilities and everything. And so... So yeah, was was everything a little bit bigger um, and, oh, yeah. and more elaborate than she thought it would be? Oh yeah, absolutely. She didn't really, I don't think she under, she understood the magnitude of you know Penn State until she really got there. Yeah, she's she's going to get a good impression over the next four years of what exactly goes into Big Ten football, Penn State That's football, it. Power Five football. That's um, it. You mentioned she talked to Coach Franklin. I talked to Coach Franklin, uh, you know, at least once a week too. But I'm yeah. a reporter; it's a different relationship. Yeah. What is he like as a recruiter with your families, with you? Because he has obviously had a ton of success. Yeah. And, and, and I hear, I've heard it from you. I've heard it from your classmates, from the 2019 kids. Family, 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 yeah. family. Tell me exactly what goes into that and why he creates that, how he creates that family environment. Coach Franklin is just he's a great dude. He's a great man. Um, his family first, you know. And my mom, she really, she really took, you know, she really took our uh she really appreciated that, sorry. And you know, it's just when I told her, you know, Penn State was where I wanted to be and, you know, when the opportunity came when they finally offered me, I let her know that that's where I'm gonna be, you know, um, taking my time. And she she stood by me and she understood. Um, you know, she, she finally got to establish a strong relationship with Franklin and from there it was <laughs> we're going. Yeah, he sealed the deal. He seems That's to it. do a nice job with that with the parents. So let's have some fun for the last couple of questions here, and, and then we'll, we'll let you enjoy the rest of your uh, your bye week here, and hopefully you're getting refreshed for the playoff push. Sure. Um, let us do some let's do some uh, class superlatives. So we're gonna you know I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a label at you. You tell me who in this Penn State class. There's 22 of you right now. Fits this description. Right. Who's the class clown? Trent Gordon. Trent Gordon Trent out of Gordon. Texas. Why? Cause listen, man, we're we're at the game this weekend, and Trent. So you know when the cheerleaders are coming out, right? All you see oh, yeah, is yeah. all you see is everyone's on the side, you know, behind the ropes. All you see is Trent walking by, straight face. He's just walking. You don't like who does that? It's Trent. That's Trent. <laughs> okay, all right. Trent Gordon uh, off for his official visit, having yes, some sir. fun. Class clown, according to Jason Lucetta. Yes, uh, Jesse Lucetta. Now Jesse. Most likely, this is going to be a tough one because I know there's a few candidates, and I know you probably want to claim this one. Oh, yeah. Most likely to win a Heisman Trophy in your class. My class, I'm going with Justin Shorter or Ricky Slade. Justin Shorter, Ricky Slade, yeah. and, and defensive guy. Those guys are both special. How do you think they're going to impact the offense right away? Because Saquon Barkley is probably in the NFL next year. Absolutely. Um, Deshaun Hamilton's gone. Uh, you're going to say goodbye to Mike Isiki at tight end. Do you think those two could come in and play a role in this offense as freshmen? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, those two guys are electrifying. You know, they do they do some things on the field. Where it's like humans aren't supposed to be able to do that, you know. So, you know, they're, right. they're, they're really special. And I'm excited to see what they're going to do, you know. I'll be going up against them every single day. So, get your popcorn ready. Justin, <laughs> Justin Shorter, a five-star, and Ricky Slade. Probably is the five star. We'll see where he ends up in rankings, but uh, he's also Mr. All Purpose, returning sure. kickoffs, catching passes, running for touchdowns. He's been unbelievable this year. Sure. Here's another one for you. Got two more. Most likely member of this Penn State class to give a motivational locker room speech. Me. <laughs> Me. There it is. And I-, I won't ask you to do it now because I'm not going to throw it your way. Yeah. We got to hear, we got to hear, you know, at least a taste of that, but I won't do it right now. It's too late at night right. and I'm sure you relax. <laughs> so you got to get in the right mind. Exactly. You, you got to get in the zone. I set you that one up. All right. This is one of my favorites because I've been covering recruiting or involved with recruiting for about a decade. Yeah. And this tends to happen in recruiting. Most likely member of the Penn State recruiting class to be mistaken for a 30 year old. Nana. <laughs> Nana. That was kind of a layup too, I think. Yeah. Not looks like a grown <laughs> man. Edu, offensive tackle out of Virginia. Ew. Grown man strength and grown man looks, it would seem. Uh, Jesse, my last question for you is, Saturday, big game. Get the impression that if Penn State handles business, wins this one, they're going to be on a definite path towards the college football playoff and another opportunity to win a Big Ten championship. Yes, sir. A lot of work to do, but how do you see this game playing out? What's your pr- prediction for a score? <sighs> I'm going 27-14 Penn State. 
27-14. You heard it here first from Jesse Lucchetta. Jesse, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I can't wait to talk with you again. Definitely enjoy your bye week. Yes, and wishing you the best of luck as you move towards those playoffs and maybe a championship at Mercyhurst. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take it easy, Jesse. All right. We are.